This video is about scripting your finds in FileMaker from Claris. We'll be putting together all the things that we have been learning in this series on FileMaker finding fundamentals. So if you haven't seen those videos, you may want to check those out in the playlist. But this one is about scripting. So I'm demonstrating a solution similar to what I've used in the past when it needed to have some complex finds with the states and courses for uh, education, whether it was for emails or correspondence or printed mail or even just reporting. So I had this solution put together and it may seem somewhat daunting, but it's actually really simple and kind of demonstrates how simple it can be with a few of the pitfalls. So I'll first show you the script behind the scenes here and here's where the allow user abort and set error capture can come into play because if there's an error in the find you want to decide do you want the user to see it or are you going to capture it and control it? Do you want the user to be able to get out with the escape key if the find is taking too long? So those are very important in this particular scenario. So I'm setting some variables of just passing in three parameters, what I'm searching for, what kind of search it is, and whether it is being omitted or not. So those are the only three pieces we need. And then we enter find mode. And this becomes very important, looking at the pause on and off. And this can be dangerous or it can be exactly what you're looking for. So we'll demonstrate both of those. Then we're going to set the field that we're searching on by the parameter. Then if it's omitted, we choose this. Otherwise, we are going to either do the find, constrain, or extend. You're not going to do multiple ones. It's only going to be one or the other. And then we have the error trapping. And this can be tricky also, whether you're using the found count or the last error. So we'll see if those make a difference. And then typically, if it's greater than zero, you'll do something. Or if the last error is zero or 401. 401 means there were no records found. So that can be very helpful to know that specific error code. And then we also have that you can do the perform quick find in the script as well as a script step. And we covered this in a previous video on the dynamic search and portal filter. If you haven't seen that, you may want to check that out. But I just wanted to point out that you could use that as part of your script. So we're going to debug this just so you can see these differences between these options. So we'll just click the debugger and well, we'll have to turn the debugger on and then we will just do a find from one of these. So we'll just say California, for example. So as we go through this script, we set our variables and then we have find mode, but the pause is on. So we look here and right up here, it says the script is paused. This can be very good if you want the user to enter something like maybe we'll just say stew or we'll put something in there then they would have to hit continue. But if they haven't been trained on how to do this, it can be kind of confusing. And I'll just stop the script in the middle of this because they may have expected something to happen. And if you decide to go to list mode, notice we're still in this, this pause status with the perform find and the cancel find. And it's kind of small up here and so they may not see it right away and they may be going about their business and looking at some other things and and going around and they don't even realize they're still in find mode so this may have its purpose but in general i found that you will probably want to have that set to off and so we're going to disable that one and enable the pause off. So we just use enter find mode regardless of which one of these we are doing. So that step is really easy. So let's just debug this again. We'll close and save all of that. And let's hit California again. Let's open up our script debugger. 
and walk through so we get our parameters. We're in find mode now. It's going to set the field, which we've said is the state. And we didn't have an omit parameter, so it goes into perform the find. It's not going to do the other ones. And here we're going to set the found count and get the last error and everything seems to be okay and I'll demonstrate a different option there so if the found count is greater than zero which it is it would do something and we go through the rest of the script so we found everything that was in California so this can be very helpful just for reporting there's 28 in Idaho Kentucky if you just want a quick status and if you wanted to change how these look you can have that part as well but we're focused on the find parts but what happens if we choose one that didn't have anything and there it says no records match this criteria because it captured the error instead of us controlling it the file maker was able to show that to them and you may or may not want that to happen so if we turn this on and turn the other one off then when we save this and we do that same one here there's no error shown and we're still at zero we'll show all records and do this one and there is zero but there was no error captured so now we're going to show all and i want to open the script debugger and we'll click on the same one here so you can see the importance of the order that things are done so if we get past this find we're doing the perform perform find to see there's an error right here that it shows so we want to capture that but when we get here, since we set the found count before we get the last error, there was no error in this step right here. So now there's no error. So when you go to this, it says last error was zero. If we open up the data viewer, last error is zero. So if you're going to use this get last error, you need to make it immediately following whatever the function was that you just called you can have if statements but you really want this get last error to be immediately preceding that so we're going to edit this script and we'll make that switch here up to there that's all we're going to change which will halt the script and then we will just run it again so we can see the difference between those so we'll click that and we will step through the script all the way down to our error and there is our error and since get last error is immediately following that when we open data viewer last error shows as 401 so that is a very important distinction one that is made often unfortunately now we can do the error trapping and here's where you have to decide if you want to go with the error code or the found set and there is a difference uh, between the two that could be something you're not expecting this is kind of what we think would happen if it didn't find anything in these up here except for extend found set if you extend it and there wasn't anything that you extended it's still a found count of zero so it may do something other than what you think so my recommendation would be that you use the last error of zero meaning there was no error and there was something found or you use the get last error equals 401 meaning there was an error so either of these two are for sure going to tell you what happened in that search so we'll demonstrate that with the extend found set but those are the main pieces to watch out for when you are scripting the find and there is one other piece here and we'll just uh, also show you the script behind the scenes it is simply passing three parameters of the state what kind of find and whether it's an omit so all of these are exactly the same except for the two digit state so we're using one script for all of these 
one script for these and then one script for the courses taken. So this gives you a way to quickly make a whole bunch of different finds and extends and constraints uh, all without your keyboard or trying to remember where you're at in all of this. So this has the exact same scripts but the only thing that's different here is it says constrain instead of find and then the extend would just say extend instead of constrain. So you only need three scripts to do this and then the omit uh, is the other parameter. So if we wanted to find everyone in California and maybe we're going to add Maryland you can see the found count here and Ohio we're extending so it's going up but we want uh, maybe all the graduates which means this is a five and we extended that so actually we want to constrain the graduates down to that and maybe we want to know if they've taken their continuing ed course so there's 831 people that we could market to with that specific criteria so that's how this worked out in the solution which works great when you have a finite number of choices that you are extending constraining finding and omitting there's one other piece that you want to know and that is the way that it handles memory this is a great feature when you know how it works so i'm going to do a find separately from those buttons on the first name field, the last find I did. So I hit enter and there were no records that matched that criteria. So now when we go into script mode, if I add somewhere in here, it doesn't matter where it is, we'll just come down here and we add the perform find script step, it knows what the last find was that you did and it was in the name first field, the last find that I did. So this is excellent uh, for creating the complex searches and then you simply add the step and it puts all the pieces in there no matter how complex that it was. However, it's going to remember the criteria immediately preceding when you added the script step. So if you notice up here, this one, we added this script step a while ago, but the find that it is going to remember is the find that I did just prior to adding that. We haven't been searching for this for quite a while. We did the states and other things. So this can be helpful. It can be good if you want to save that. And the same thing goes for extend or constrain, it's going to save that. And just to prove that point, we'll save this and we'll do another find. And this time we'll go in the last name field and we'll just type in some characters and maybe we want to not have people that are in Indiana, for example. So we'll omit that, but we do want people that have three courses and we want to omit people that have that. So we do a perform find, we found 842. If we go back to our script, remember this is the one that we entered before. So I'm gonna add another one and hit the space bar and you can see it put all of those in here. And if you double click that, it actually gives you more options that you can change the criteria if you want to, or you can even add another one in this exact same row and save it that way. So we'll just hit OK. But what about this one that we did just before that? It still has the last find I did. So it saves the previous one when you enter it, not when you click the gearbox and uh, look at the previous one that you did. And the last thing to point out is if we do actually choose this one, notice you can switch this to omit records for this and save that. And you can add one to this and we'll just say uh, California. We can add that and these two can be different, but within a find here, if I added something here, we'll just say Ohio and we added that line, you can't 
make this a find and this one omit. See how it went back to find? All of the requests in this section have to be the same action, but you can have multiple ones here and just continue to alternate back and forth or however you want and duplicate it or maybe delete one. There's a lot of things you can do in this dialogue, but it has been easier in general if you can perform this find here in its complexity and then go into the script and add it here as opposed to if you just started from scratch and tried to fill in everything that was here and you have to scroll to find the fields that you want and then change the criteria maybe insert an operator and it's not quite as seamless as if you just manually do it here and then it automatically transfers over. But those are the general principles and we'll have to disable those. And then lastly, I wanted to show you that because we had this template set up this way, that when I copied this over for a different find, the only thing that I had to change was one step. All I had to do was change that I was looking in the courses field instead of the states field and everything else was exactly the same aside from maybe if you had something specific you were going to do in those instances. And so I copied this again to do the courses taken and the only one I had to change was line 22. So if you have the right template, then you can reuse this and make sure that you have the get last error and get found count or your allow user abort set error capture and even your error trapping here all in place the way you like. And then it is simply one modification and you have your full-fledged scripting of FileMaker finds. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that makes your computing more productive. If you liked this series, you might want to check out our other courses on Productive Computing University. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.